Hello, and welcome to Your Sparkly Brand. We're here to inspire and empower entrepreneurs like you. This podcast is all about delivering no fluff, high value content that helps you grow your business. It doesn't matter if you have no budget and are still DIYing everything on your own. We're giving you the tips, tools, and strategies you need to build a sparkly empire. I'm Lauren Tassi, your copywriter and launch strategist, and I'm here with my co-host, the branding and marketing design queen, Megan Gersh. Hi, Megan. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been kind of a, a weird week on my end. We were in a bit of a car accident this week, so everything has gotten a little bit rearranged. Thankfully, everybody's okay. And no one was hurt. And so, you know, just having to, when it comes to the business side of things, just kind of shuffle things around a little bit because Monday was pretty much out of the office. So yeah, I'm so sorry to hear about that. But yeah, at least, you know, it's like when, when those things come up, it's like, you know, at least I have my own business and I can, you know, handle what I need to handle in my life first. Yeah, exactly. I've definitely been having like a, a lot of gratitude this week over, you know, just every Everybody being okay and also having the flexibility in my business to be able to be like, I built in some padding into my projects and, you know, like have that flexibility in my business. And so it's just been, it's been good. Awesome. So that, that was your non-sparkly <laughs> moment of the week. Do you have a sparkly moment of the week? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been, I mentioned this last week, but I've been working away on this branding project for a client. We're about to wrap up. The client is absolutely thrilled. So like, obviously that makes me super happy when the client super happy. And yeah, I'm just like really proud of how this project has turned out. And it's definitely going to be a portfolio piece for me. So yeah. What about you? Yeah, I bought myself a new computer. <laughs> <gasps> Yay, That's awesome. So it is, you are literally more sparkly now than you were last week on my end. Yeah. It was one of those things like Friday afternoon. I was just like, I've been talking about it. I've been thinking about it. Like I'm obviously I'm going to get a Mac. So it's like one of two. I just, I'm like, I'm just going to the store. I'm just, I have money. Like it's not, it's one of those mindset things you kind of forget about. I I feel like when it comes to like computers, I'm like still a broke college student or something where it's like, I can't believe I have to get a new computer. It's like, yeah, I do. And I'm running a business and this is an investment. And so for anybody who's listening has been thinking about getting a new computer for a while, just go get that new computer because it's so good. It's life changing. It was literally not able fast enough to keep up with my brain. Yeah. I feel like sometimes it's hard to wrap our brain around like those big technology investments. Like it's just like, oh, like this is like a tool that I need, but like the thing that I have is not like super broken and you know what I mean? It kind of goes yeah. back and forth there. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't broken. And actually I just, I wiped it all and I gave it to Alex and then he's got his first Mac now. So he's, he enjoys it. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, it's not dead in the ground, but I still deserve something new. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. All right. So do you want to, you're sort of, you're the queen of today's episode because we're talking about Canva. I'm very pro Canva. I think it's a, such a powerful tool. It's really given a lot of business owners, the ability to DIY a lot of their imagery and their marketing assets. And it's, just really changed the game when it and leveled the playing field a lot when it comes to design work. It has so many built-in elements that businesses can leverage, whether you have a free account or a pro account. They have stock imagery, different icons you can use, different textures, even like set like text combinations that you can take for inspiration and use in your designs, which is super helpful. Also, one of my favorite features in the Canva Pro version is that they have this, this resize feature that makes things like super simple, especially if you're working on multiple platforms in social media, it makes it just really, really easy to transform a square graphic into like a vertical graphic. So that's one of my favorite features. And they also have like a built-in scheduler, which can be helpful for some businesses. So all of that being said, I am super pro Canva, but I also see a lot of businesses making a lot of mistakes when it comes to Canva. It's not the best tool for every single scenario. And I think it's a little bit misleading that the platform has has certain functionality built into it when it's actually like not best practice to use it in that way. So today we're going to go through some of the best and the worst ways to use Canva. So yeah. Awesome. I am. I'm so, I can't wait to hear this because I have gone from like a Canva novice. I was using this thing before called PicMonkey, which I'm sure probably doesn't exist anymore because Canva like wiped them out. But like, you know, I used to do it for myself, even just for like personal stuff for like my first business I had, I was doing all sorts of like, you know, that sort of simple, like social media stuff, the stuff that's not the most important, but you have to do a lot of it. And I just feel like as a sort of amateur graphic designer, if you will, it has just given me so much power. Like I designed my wedding invitations and I designed, you know, like there's all this stuff that I'm just like so grateful that there's a tool like that now, because I remember maybe five or six years ago when we did the pug yoga calendar, I wanted to do it, but I just didn't have the Photoshop experience. Like it's, there's such a, the learning curve there is so much higher. So we had somebody else design the calendar where like, if we were to do that today, I, I could totally do that. Yeah. Yeah, totally.
totally. The thing about Photoshop too, is that like the Adobe software just is constantly evolving. Like even like, I mean, I have 15 years experience in the graphic design world and I still learn new Photoshop tricks <laughs> every single day. Like, I'm not joking. Like they just keep adding more features. So Canva is thankfully a lot more intuitive and very drag and drop. Like, you know, it's just a lot of a simpler interface. So do you want to tell us, I guess let's start with the don'ts, right? So we can end on a positive note. Let's, let's start with what you should not be using Canva for. For sure. So the first thing that you'll probably notice about Canva is that it is filled with templates. And so if you're running a business, you want to create your own templates and not use the templates that are within the platform. You can always kind of look to those templates for inspiration, but I generally don't recommend using them just because they're templates on Canva. There are lots of businesses and people are using them. If you wind up using the same exact template without changing much about it, like you're going to wind up looking like other businesses. And so the whole point of branding and building your business is to stand out from your competition. And so that's why I don't re really recommend using those. Another big stumbling block that I see a lot of businesses make is using Canva for logo design. You cannot trademark Canva logos. And so it's a really big issue when you go sit down in Canva. They have a lot of templates for these too. And I just feel so bad that it's even like an option, but you'll see, like I can spot a, I mean, like I said, I have a lot of years of experience, but like I can spot a Canva logo from a mile away. It's either like the, the paint swoosh, or there's like a little circle one, or there's like very clear, like top of the template list versions of these logo templates that like, I've just seen a ton of times. And it just, it's like another thing where it's like, you really want to be putting thought and effort into your branding. You know, like your branding is essentially how you are presenting your business to the world. And so you don't want that to look like any other business out there. So stay away from logo design on Canva. One other thing that I, I will mention too, is to not use Canva for email signatures. And let me explain a little bit about what I mean with that. So they have templates on Canva that essentially you can fill in your name, your title, your social media, you know, icons or whatever. And essentially it will just save down as one image. So the problem with this is when you add it to your email to send to your clients or, you know, whoever you're emailing, it just shows up as an image within the email. That's not searchable. If somebody goes into their email and they're trying to search for your name, they will not find you <laughs> because it's just an image. And so it's really, really important to, you know, maybe you can use an image for your actual photo and then using actual text within the email to write out your name, your title, all of that stuff. So that way your emails stay searchable. So just like a, a minor best practice thing there. Another big thing that I've seen a lot of, strangely, a lot of TikToks of people teaching other people how to do this. And like every single time I'm like, oh, like I just kind of like pulling my hair out, like watching these TikToks of like just bad advice. There are Canva templates that essentially lay out your entire email blast as a single image, which is also not best practice. And I, I receive a lot of these emails too. You're like, I don't know if you received these too, Lauren, but like when you're doing an email blast for your business, it should be an equal distribution of images and text just for the same reason that I was talking about. Like you want your emails to be searchable. Also, not everybody displays images in their emails. And so if your emails are all images, there's a, there's a percentage of people that will not even be able to see that email from you. One thing that I've also noticed too, is that it can be a little bit limiting when it comes to visualization of data. I've had to make several graphs for different projects that I've been working on. And especially if you're trying to make something that looks really branded and in line with the company, there's just a little bit of limitation there when it comes to like what you can control. So like, I'll give you an example. I was making a pie chart for this infographic that I was making one time. Obviously there are multiple pieces of the pie chart, but you can only choose one color when you're adding the branding to that, to that graph. So it's a little bit frustrating just because like, obviously you want the pie pieces to be different colors. So that way you can show like the differentiation in the data. So what I like to do instead of using Canva for those types of projects is I like to use a tool called Visme. It's V-I-S-M-E. And it just has a lot more control when it comes to those really data-driven designs. And I think they do have a free trial or some kind of free plan that you can try out too, if you want to take a look at that tool. I would Im imagine too, if you're making a data-driven design, that that's something that's going to make you money, right? <laughs> if you're making a graph, like these are, those are important things, you know, like a story you're posting on Instagram is probably not that important, but like if you're putting together a case study or you're putting together a pitch deck or something, then 
that's the place to spend the money and get the, you know, the professional looking stuff. Yeah. And it's not that it's like bad on Canva. It just like, depending on like the, going back to the example that I was talking about, if you're, if you have a pie graph that has five different pieces, it's just going to take that one brand color and do like a really dark version, a, a medium dark version, a light, light version, and just kind of make it out of that one color. So it's not like terrible. I just like would prefer more control when it comes to the brand colors. But in general, I just don't recommend using Canva for any kind of like strategy driven approach in your business. It's really for like, if you have brand guidelines in place already for making templates for yourself and all of that, but I'll get into that a little bit more in uh, the Canva do's. Awesome. So I wanted to ask you a couple things. What if I already had a logo designed in Canva? Is it, and I, I'm like realizing its limitations. Is it something like if I go, I kind of like this logo, Meg, can you make it better? Or should we start over? Where, where, what do you do in that situation? So there's obviously, I mean, it's your business. There's, there's a lot of different things that can happen here. If you really like the logo, if you like the the typography or the, you know, the, the imagery that you've used and you decide to work with a designer, they can certainly create you something custom from that. And that might be as simple as taking the text into Adobe Illustrator and modifying each of the letters a little bit. And that is a completely custom version of what you already have. Now, when it comes to the imagery, if there's any imagery in the existing logo, I would suggest probably nixing that and going with something completely custom, just because again, you can't use those elements in trademarked logos. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, I think so for sure. And then the other thing I wanted to ask about, and I hope I'm not like jumping ahead on your thing, but stock templates, I understand not a great idea. If we were going to change them, like, is there like, it needs to be 25% different or, you know, is, do you have any sort of rule of thumb on that? I'm sure it's more than just like changing pink to blue. Yeah, definitely. So this is kind of a, an interesting question just because like, I mean, you can use it as like the base for like, this is what the headline should look like. And here's like the weight. But I mean, honestly, the more that you can change about it and kind of infuse your own brand personality into it, the better, especially if you have like different brand icons that you can insert into it or like different brand textures, anything that's custom to your brand to really make it your own. I don't know that it's like a hard and fast rule when it comes to like the percentage of change, but you know, if you look at it in the template window and you have your modified version on the right, you know, you can make your judgment call on like, does this look significantly different than what is available to everyone? Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good way to think about it. The other thing I wanted to ask about was stock images. So they have so many, is that what's, what's your feeling? Feeling on what's available there versus other places. I personally love their stock imagery that's available. So I have a Canva Pro account, which I think is well worth the cost. Yeah. I think it's like 13 bucks a month or something like that. But I think their stock imagery is well worth the cost. I also like to tap into the stock video that they have available. So that can be really fun to like, if I'm presenting a new logo on social media or something like that, I will take the logo and like overlay it on top of a video just to give that much more of like the vibe of like what the company is. So that can be a really fun way to kind of like present your graphics. But yeah, I use it in conjunction with other stock photo sites. So it's not just like one or the other. I kind of use it with both. Awesome. All right. So do you want to tell us your Canva do's? Yeah. So these are some, some best practices when it comes to Canva. So obviously we already talked about this a little bit, but if you are able to create your own branded templates, that's something that will really, really help you in your business. I can tell you that before I started using in Canva, I was actually very anti Canva for a long time. And it was just like a, a thing of like a designer hang up, right? Like I was like, I, I can't use Canva if I'm like a real designer. But once I started using it, I was like, holy crap, this is so helpful when it comes to batch creating all of your social media content. It makes things really, really easy, especially if you have those branded templates in place. It's literally, you can make like 20 graphics in five minutes. It's just a matter of changing out the text, maybe adding an image here and there, like, and and boom, you're good to go. One other thing that I will mention that is a great feature within Canva is the ability to create your own color palette. And so you can save different color palettes within your account. And so you can use those across graphics. It just makes it so easy to kind of pick that color and apply it to the different designs that you're working on. The other thing that I wanted to mention too, and this kind of goes with like, if you are working with a professional designer on your logo, you can ask your designer to, to export all of your logo files in SVG format, because if you drag those into Canva, you'll actually be able to dynamically change the colors 
of each piece of the logo, like within Canva. I know this is like kind of hard from an audio perspective to kind of explain <laughs> how this works, but like, imagine if you have a two color logo, maybe one color is black and then the other color is teal. Maybe you wanted the teal part of the logo to be blue or something like that. You can really, really easily click on the teal, just color swatch within the logo and change it to blue within Canva. It makes it really, really easy. Another thing that I would recommend using Canva for is to use it for brand presentations or booklets or social media graphics. As I've said earlier, it just, again, makes it really, really easy to set these types of things up and really, really easy to format everything and snap everything to make sure that it's aligned and all of that good stuff. And lastly, setting up brand guidelines is something that I highly recommend. And this is a perfect use of Canva. This is something where you set your, you know, your brand fonts, your brand colors, your logo usage, all of the textures and iconography that you use for your brand and getting all of that in place. You can essentially create a PDF from that document so that you can share that with your team. If you ever hire somebody new, I actually have a product called the DIY brand kit. That might be helpful to you, but basically it's a Canva based brand guide template with video strategy. So essentially you will get psychology that goes into creating great branding for your business. So that you're not just like picking colors because you like them, but you're actually picking colors that will resonate with your target audience and that will actually generate you more sales in your business. So we will put a link to that in the show notes, but yeah, it's a super helpful tool. Awesome. So you mentioned this twice and now I want to dig into it a little bit. Textures. What do you mean by that? So textures are a great component to infuse into your branding just because let's say you're working on a website or something like that and you need some kind of background texture, right? You need, you don't want it to just be like a plain block of blue background. Textures just help to give a little bit of depth to whatever you're working on. So you could add that texture by behind the text just to give it a, something a little bit more for the content to feel a little bit more rich. And it can really help to just bring that little extra element to the overall experience of whatever it is you're creating. So is that something like I've seen like where kind of it makes it look like it's like handmade paper or something or like a fuzzy sweater, but and like a very muted version of this, like a fuzzy sweater or something. Is that is that specifically what you mean by texture or is it even bigger than that? Exactly. Yeah, okay. I, there, there are lots of sites out there too where you can grab free textures. Obviously, if you have the means, work with a designer to get custom textures in place for your business. But it can just, again, it's just like that element that but that brings that little something extra to the design. Awesome. This has been so helpful for me as the amateur Canva wannabe. So thank you for that. And then I think we should do um, a poll for this episode. So I think it's going to be for our listeners to vote. Are you a Canva convert or a Canva hater? And I would love to hear, especially from like people in the design, visual, branding, that side of things like are we like where are we going with this in terms of your industry are we hating it or are we loving it so go ahead if you're listening on spotify you can just go into the show and vote there you can drop a comment on social media wherever you're listening let us know and that's our episode so if you want to check out the diy brand kit again we'll leave a, a note and a link for that in the show notes thank you so much for listening and until next time stay sparkly